Uh, good morning and welcome to today's webinar. Um, my name is Alison Starkey and I'm the Communications and Marketing Officer at Sugar Research Australia. Uh, before we start, I'd like to let you know, of course, that this webinar is being recorded and the recording will be made available um, on our website uh, following the webinar. So today we've got Dr. Shamsul uh, Buhan, SRA's Plant Pathologist Biosecurity and Disease Screening, who's going to explain SRA's disease resistance screening process and the disease rating system. So the webinar will uh, consist of a presentation for around 40 to 45 minutes, followed by a Q&A session for 15 minutes or so. Um, I'm sure you're all used to all of these instructions, but during the presentation, we ask that all microphones are on mute. Uh, if you have a question during the presentation, you could um, type that into the chat at the top, um, a little chat, a little speech bubble icon at the top of your screen, you can type that in. Uh, so we might hold off on answering, Shamsul might just kind of wait until the Q&A and we'll go through and, and go, th go back over any questions that have been typed in there. Um, and during the Q&A session, you can again either type your question into that chat um, function or you can raise your hand um, using the little hand button also located at the top of the screen. Uh, now, uh, towards the end of the webinar, I'm just going to put a, a link in the chat to uh, a survey and it um, takes about two minutes to complete that survey and it's really helpful to us in understanding how useful the webinar is to you and what we can do to provide further support to industry. Um, so I'll remind you about that at the end, but there'll just be a, a two minute survey that we'd love you to complete. Um, so I'm now going to hand over to Dr. Jason Eglinton, who's the Executive Manager of Variety Development at SRA to introduce Shamsul, Shamsul to you. So over to you, Jason. Thanks very much, Alison. Welcome everybody. Um, so this morning, um, Shamsul is going to talk to us about uh, the disease screening program run by, by SRA. Uh, Shamsul is a very experienced plant pathologist. He's been with the company for over 14 years and he's based at SRA's Woodford site, which is a special biosecurity zone physically separated from uh, commercial sugarcane production that allows us to work with uh, uh, these, these uh, pathogens under field conditions. And of course, the disease screening program that, that Shamsil oversees plays a really important role in our breeding program, developing information for selection decisions as experimental clones progress through to the advanced stages of testing. Uh, that as that information builds up, uh, it then supports the commercial release decisions for new varieties and ultimately for, for growers, um, adoption information and decision making for them to manage uh, risks of, of disease at a local level. So Shamsul is going to take us through uh, a little bit about what's happening with thousands of clones moving from our six regional selection sites uh, to Woodford to be pressure tested against a range of diseases. And of course there's an ongoing continuous improvement of, of screening methods and data analysis and interpretation for those established diseases where screening has been done for a long time. And he's also going to talk a little bit about, I guess, some, some new uh, um, development work in terms of um, developing new tests. So, um, Shamsul, thank you. Over to you. Good morning, everyone. Thanks, Jason, for the kind introduction. So, uh, I'm, not, I'm not actually going to introduce myself again. So, I just want to give some... Uh, uh, overview actually what I'm going to talk today. Uh, Jason already actually did my work. Uh, so the first thing I'll talk about a bit of background information about uh, disease. What is what does actually disease resistance mean? And also how we actually it implies to our disease screening trial. And the second information actually I want to talk about the disease, uh, the complexity of our disease screening. So everyone bit of an idea that we can send a clone to Woodford and they just go through a process and then everything is done at the same time. It's not that simple, it's much more complicated. So that's thing I will be giving a couple of examples actually how we do our screening trial. And the third thing will be I'll be talking about the 
SRA disease rating method and how we actually rate it. We develop a world-class disease screening and rating method. And the last but not, not the least, I'll be talking about the challenges we facing now and also some future opportunity, opportunity that could actually improve our disease screening program. So let's move on. Uh, sorry. So I guess the first thing Ed, is what is disease resistance? I just want to see the so if I call disease resistance is the measure of the ability of a plant just to grow and produce as uh, grow and and reproduce as well as uh, not suffer any ill loss. So it can actually sustain the um, uh, infection of the pathogen. So the other other way I can say that it is the ability of the plant to actually suppress the growth and reproduction of the pest and pathogen. So in sort of like a, it can grow, even the pathogen can come or in, a, invade. And also it suppress the reproduction of the pest and pathogen. So it doesn't actually do any ill loss. So I guess the next thing I will talk about the disease resistant category. I can go through a bit of a academia way. I can say that uh, disease resistant category, resistant, tolerant, intolerant, or I can talk about the disease immune, uh, disease immunity. But if I are a sugar cane grower, it doesn't mean that much. So I want to give some sort of like a practical example to actually define the disease resistant category. So for example, in SMART, if I said that what is the resistance mean in terms of sugar cane SMART? So there is an example of Q151, which is a resistant, highly resistant, variety. So in case of sugarcane smart, the disease, the pathogen cannot, pathogen, you can see sometimes there are some infection, but the pathogen can actually sustain or reproduce uh, that in a way that it could actually harm the plant. So plant actually suppress the growth of the pathogen. So the other category I can see, we always say susceptible. You can see one of the example is Q205. Once it was a very um, popular variety, uh, unfortunately susceptible to SMART. So in that case, you can see the figure actually speaks thousand word. So you can see the pathogen can actually grow. It allows the pathogen to grow. And then as a result, it's actually suffer ill loss. So I guess that these two is very black and white. You can understand resistant and susceptible, but there is a, another category we call is intermediate. So this is kind of a bit of a um, uh, complex situation. So this is uh, the picture of one of our very um, um, popular variety Q208. So in some condition, it, it actually grow and you can see on and off smart in this um, uh, variety, but it doesn't actually have much, doesn't suffer much ill loss. So you can see some sort of smart in some, uh, most of the cases you see some smart, but, but occasionally when the condition is not suitable, very harsh condition, high temperature and very dry condition and plants suffer some sort of um, flooding or or drought, you could actually have some kind of production loss. So this is the kind of, so the intermediate varieties is always a good uh, choice, but it also risky, especially when the condition is not very good, when the proper, um, uh, inoculum level 
is very high and the condition of the growth is not uh, suitable for the um, or favorable for the plant. So this is another example of uh, this Q208. Uh, we use this variety in our disease screening trial. So you can see the result of the, so this is the incidence of SMART on this variety from 2007 to uh, 2017. You can see there are, uh, quite variation in this uh, intermediate variety. In uh, 2016 and 2017, you can see there is a, there are a bit, bit of a smart on this, uh, fair bit of smart on this variety. The reason is, uh, in particularly in 2017, there is exceptional dry period uh, uh, and temperature was uh, high in, in in our wood food trial area. So you can see this, how it ch changes in particular for the intermediate variety. So sugarcane disease resistant variety. So we SRA always develop new variety. So which can actually increase the productivity and we try to uh, improve the industry profitability. But also we need to actually respond to new threat um, in change in climate. So we have to make sure whatever variety actually we, we produce is not actually susceptible to um, uh, existing and emerging pest and diseases. So resistant variety in many cases, is the only way to control the diseases, uh, uh, some of the major diseases, for example, uh, Fiji, Smart, Fiji, Libgol, Pekimetra, and few other diseases. The good thing about the resistant variety, they are environmentally friendly. You don't have to any, any pesticide. Also, they are much cheaper option and easily adopted by the grower. So, in our screening trial, we we screened about 10 diseases for 10 diseases. Uh, so you can see the most of the diseases we use artificial artificial inoculation. Sorry, what did I do? Uh, so I think I may, uh, excuse me. I think I get, okay. So, So, uh, and only orange rust and yellow spot, we use um, natural infection. That means that we um, plant them in Meringa and then it got infected uh, by natural uh, airborne spore and then we raid them. So we also, from next uh, year, we, or next couple of years time, we'll be trying to actually, we'll be screening for chlorotic resistance. So that, uh, so it's kind of a under the development. So with these things, I just um, uh, put a mark on RSD, that stunting disease. Um, you can see that most of the disease we screen for, uh, they, they, they cannot be actually uh, managed successfully or or uh, uh, successfully within uh, using any other method. But for RSD, is not is the, not the case. But we still want to actually skill um, 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 a screen for disease resistance. But there are some challenges. We will talk about this later. So, screening for disease resistance. So, in the SRA current breeding program, all potential variety must be screened for disease for major diseases before release. But this is a complex uh, process, and it is varies between diseases, trial duration, trial condition assessment method. So each 
diseases have their own kind of uh, conditions, so we have to maintain this. So I'll give you a couple of four examples of four types of disease we use. Uh, this is one of the disease, um, uh, sugar can smart. It is a fungal disease. So uh, sugar can smart is our largest uh, screening program. Each year we, we gets around 2000 clones from various stages of the selection program. And, is, um, and you can see that it is a big operation. We, we ship them, uh, sorry, uh, we, um, so the growers send them to us and then it get cut into one I said, and to we inoculate them into smart sports suspension and it goes into the growth cabinet uh, on 31 degrees Celsius, 80% uh, relative humidity for a week. And then we actually, then it goes into the process process of planting, it goes into the glass house or polytunnel and in the outside field. Uh, and then uh, after planting, we about four or five months, we give, a, give, we give it a preliminary um, check for SMART and then we return them. Actually four or five months plant, we just slash them. Uh, just uh, as if we actually retuning them because smart uh, express better when uh, you can give a bit of a stress, especially for if you if you retune them. So after retuning, uh, about four or five months, we give them a final checking for smart, and then we inspect for um, incidence or severity. So next uh, one is another uh, organism, another pathogen. So this is a animal nematode. So this is the same thing. It is a plant parasitic nematode. We usually use two types of nematode plant, um, root knot and root lesion. So same process almost, but in that case, we actually inoculate uh, the, the pot instead of dipping them into solution and then we have and then we grow them in glass house instead of in the field and then we extract them for two nematodes there, there are two extraction uh, procedure say for example bleach uh, method for uh, root knot and whitehead method for the root lesion nematode and then we do the assessment under microscope. And the third one is Fiji leaf growth, which is a viral disease. So this is kind of a different disease. It needs different method. And the complexity of this disease is, this virus cannot actually infect the plant directly. It needs a vector. And the vector is a little plant hopper we call is Parkinsonia. So what it does, what it needs. Um, so before the actually inoculation in, in, in March or February, March, we have to go into the field and collect the um, Parkinsonia and then we grow them in plant. So the bulk of this uh, plant hopper and the plant hopper then actually put in a cage, in a net cage uh, with the infected plant, which is a previously infected plant. So the plant hopper can actually suck up the um, virus from the plant and the virus actually multiply inside and then also the plant hopper actually multiply themselves as well. So, and, and after uh, about a couple of weeks time, then we actually take them, cut this plant and spray them on the top of the test clone. And then we put them in a glass house and close the door for two weeks time. So the so so, so that uh, the insect actually they go they go out from the uh, infected. Uh, so they actually go and feed on the test clone 
as they actually feeding the test clone, they actually inject the um, inject the virus to the plant, and then we uh, after um, after four or five months, we we trade them for um, uh, diseases. So these are the symptom of Fiji lip gall. So we we retreat them for severity as well as for incidence as well. So this is the another example. This is a, a lip skull disease is caused by a bacteria. The bacteria is a vascular pathogen. It actually stays inside the vascular bundle of plant. And in that case, we actually grow the plant first in the field. And after uh, three, four months, we inoculate them by cutting the top of the plant. As we cut, we spray the bacteria on the top of the, um, on the growing point. And we have to do this in a cloudy day because the bacteria is very sensitive to ultraviolet uh, ray. Um, so, and then we grow them another um, five, six months, and then we get them for incidence and Severity, you can see that there is a pencil line symptom in most cases. You can see the chlorosis or bleaching of the leaf. The bacteria produces a, a toxin we call this alpha alpha-sidin, so it produces this um, uh, bleaching symptom on leaf. So you can see that just the reason actually I'm saying this one, this this screening process is a very compli complex process. So it's need a kind of a skill set uh, uh, and capacity for us actually to do, do this thing. So we need uh, people to, who can understand the biology of the uh, pathogen as well as, uh, as, well as the um, uh, much understanding of the how to grow the pathogen, multiply the patho uh, pathogen, and then how to inoculate them into the plant for the testing. So next one, um, I already actually spoke about that. So as I said that the disease assessment we um, in trial duration, it varies from 10 weeks to um, 12 to 14 months, depends on what type of disease we are talking about. And then in cancer, in, in terms of data, we collect the incidence or the number, like for SMART, we actually get the incidence. Um, uh, for nematode, we count the number. And also we use the qualitative data as well, which is the severity. Then we send those data to the um, uh, statistician the statistician uh, analyzed the data, they assigned rating for disease resistant for each particular clone. And also the statistician checked the quality of the data. So in, in a very short, so what we do, so if we actually, so after all everything done, we give, um, the variety or test in a, a rating from one to nine, which is developed by the International Society of Sugarcane Technologists. But there is another uh, rating called zero immunity, which I haven't seen any. I don't think actually anyone seen any immune. Most of the existing variety actually they get some kind of infection. But so I guess that what does it mean? That means that if you are in a resistant category, you are allowed to commercially grow and also they have some breeding value. And if it's the intermediate variety, uh, they are still uh, allowed to grow commercially, but if it's a too like a susceptible intermediate, there might be some restric restricted release in terms of like a, if there is a no disease pressure in some area or the condition is not suitable for this particular disease, so they are then allowed to grow. So in case of susceptible, if it's a highly susceptible, usually 
um, there is no release, but there might be some sort of useful breeding value. So now disease rating method. So SRA disease rating method. So last few years, last about four uh, few years, we develop a new disease screening method, which currently being used by SRA. So this method, uh, this disease rating method actually captures the variability of rating among the test. Among the test clone, also we capture the confidence of the each disease screening trial. So, and also we replace the resistance group with a numerical rating. So previously we have actually like a one to nine, but we have the numerical rating with a confidence interval. So how confident we are. And also it gives us kind of a visual reporting for disease rating that are actually practically and statistically um, reliable. So here is an example of um, smart rating you can see in this um, so we have the like a q232 is, is a resistant variety but you can see there is a, some confidence interval to the right and left uh, uh, and but when you look at this q survey uh, four uh, which is same resistant, but his confidence interval is a uh, little bit, uh, it is actually less, it's not very restricted or, or need, uh, not very tight, which is that means that we are actually a little bit less confidence compared to Q232. So it doesn't mean that it's actually less resistant, but it is only thing is it's not been through many trial as actually Q232, you can see the confidence, confidence interval also actually um, get more and more uh, compact when we have actually more uh, screening result. So same as with the uh, um, uh, root, root rot rating, we have this, you can see there's a um, uh, different uh, clone, we have different confidence rating. So I guess, um, uh, so I think that this, um, if I go back to this one, it is actually now currently we using this method in particular for Pekimetra and SMART, which is the two most important disease for us and is very gratefully um, um, ha, ha, uh, uh, um, it is highly adopted by the uh, industry. So, and, but even we have those successes, we have some challenges. So, one of the great challenges we have in RSD screening trial, the problem with the RSD screening trial, because if you want to have a, uh, uh, breeding for a disease resistant, you need to have a parent which are resistant. Unfortunately for RSD, uh, we haven't actually seen this. So this, this is the one of the testing we doing uh, last um, about a year. So this is the qPCR result of RSD uh, bacteria concentration in the cane. So this is SRA 20 and this is uh, Q208. So this is, so previously we thought actually, so there is some perception that Q208 was resistant, but if you can see from this graph, so I just have to sort of make it clear that more, uh, so this is the qPCR result. So this is the, like a, qPCR cycle. So that means that more cycle it takes uh, takes to produce the result, it is actually more resistant. So you can see the high bar, the like a tallest bar as the high, um, more resistant compared to the small bar. So 
you can see there are some differences, but the differences is not very, very um, uh, not much different. Uh, but um, and uh, I guess the what this graph shows that most of the variety we tested for RSD, they are either susceptible or intermediate category. So, but we still want to keep the um, uh, keep doing the RSD resistant just for uh, to give information to the grower where the best practice management is not possible. I I just uh, I guess that it is a good opportunity if anyone want to give us some sort of idea what you thought about that uh, that will be great. So now we want to talk about some of the futuristic research we do. We are doing uh, to improve our existing um, screening trial. So this is the first one I was talk I'm talking about the market assisted screening. So for example, if you want to the current trial, it takes around eight to nine months to get the result. But with the market assisted for the for, for smart for for marker assisted screening if you use the sleep marker it takes only six weeks so and then if you look at the cost they actually potentially it actually give uh, it it takes it is actually um, less expensive and good thing about you don't you can actually um, screen uh, lots of um, uh, uh, clone at the early in the selection program before they actually come into the very expensive uh, advanced stage of the selection program. So the currently SRA um, uh, is um, uh, currently this um, uh, SNAP marker are in a like a implementation stage in the SRA breeding program. So the next one is image red dot screening. As you know that red dot is a very important disease um, in the Asian countries. Uh, uh, so we want to make sure that we, whatever we do, the clone actually goes into our uh, selection program, they are resistant to red dot. The one of the issue of the red dot, it takes very long time, about one and a half years. The other, um, other problem is, uh, for example, this year or a couple of years time, um, even this year actually, we can see when the plant go for one and a half years, the lodge and the heart to actually inoculate the plant because we need to actually inoculate them um, mature plant when the lodge and then inoculation and disease rating actually become harder and sometimes almost impossible. In some years, we have to actually just discard the trial because we can't actually work on this. So last couple of years, we wanted to try a much more easier method. So and so we don't have to depend on this um, the process and and also some like a uncertain conditions. So what we did actually, we cut the mature cane into two I set, and then, then we inoculate them with the adrot pathogen. And then we leave them for 10 days in the growth cabinet. And after that, we take them out and we, we photograph them. And then we did the image analysis. The interesting thing is the image analysis actually it is it is very encouraging image analysis it uh, result actually very highly correlated with our current red red dot trading but it is a still in a preliminary stage we need to do more and more work and little bit fine tuning as well so this is but if this works it would be actually great great achievement because instead of waiting for one and a half month, we can actually get the result within a couple of 
weeks time, which could actually breeder able to actually send more clone to us. Uh, so because it doesn't take that long. Currently, we only have we can only handle 10 to 15 clone, but if it is this case, in this case, we might be able to screen hundreds clone in a in one year. So the another method we actually now testing is hyperspectral imaging. It is one of the project with one of our statistician, Dr. Mumumi, and also we have a project with Griffith University. We we using hyperspectral imaging. So this is the one of the picture of the um, um, image of the um, uh, image of the um, uh, mosaic disease trial. You can see that you can clearly identify the mosaic disease. We still actually sort of under uh, want to see actually whether how can we actually quantify the disease in the field. So if it's successful, you don't have to actually go in the field uh, through the itchy and scratches pain field because sometimes it's an uncomfortable lungs also um, uh, also, it's difficult to see when the plant cells get too high. So, if it's successful, that would be a great achievement. So, we don't have to go within few minutes, we can get the result. So, another thing, uh, we have a project with Griffith University. Uh, we want to test the biosensor, whether we can um, um, detect the disease in plant. So in this project, uh, uh, we did some preliminary work. We found that this biosensor can actually detect the concentration of the, because uh, of the, it's called in different, um, uh, different um, clone. So in, in the it's call, the disease resistance actually depends uh, uh, highly correlated to the concentration of the bacteria inside the xylem tissue. So that means that higher the concentration, higher the resistance, lower the concentration, lower the resistance. So this method we found, we can get the, take the sap out of the plant and then we, we can use a simple method like a, a naked eye or colorimetric method, you can see that the high intensity color means that it is actually uh, highly susceptible. And is, if you have a low intensity color, it gives you as a low, uh, low the S susceptible or we can see it is existent. Or also we are able to actually do a uh, electrochemical testing or electrochemical method, which also give you a kind of a um, indication. You can see the, the susceptible, these are susceptible clone. And if you go in the, so these are actually resistant clone. So I guess that this is, so on this, uh, on this, we applied for a, so with the support of SRA, we have applied for a, ARC linkage project and it's got funded. So the currently this project is underway. So hopefully we will get some good result. So this is end of my talk. So the take home message is uh, the disease screening is a complex process and it's, and it varies among diseases as we can um, uh, see. And our improved disease screening method is a visual report of disease rating, which is uh, statistically and um, practically reliable. Uh, and also it actually and incorporated the um, uh, variation uh, among the tri trials and also the quality of the trial. So SRA currently working with our collaborators on new technologies such as market assisted screening, digital imaging and machine learning biosensor to improve the current screening method, which will result 
high precision, robustness, low cost, speediness, and independence of the um, environmental condition. For example, if you have a market existed screening, you don't have to actually grow them in the field. So you can actually sort of like you take the leaf and then you do the test. Uh, and also less human interference and errors. Thank you very much and thanks for your attention. Thank you, so I might take off this one. Thank you. In case we need to come back okay. to it, perhaps maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Perhaps somebody might want to refer to a slide. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so thank you very much for the presentation. And I'm just wondering, we've got one question in the chat and whether anyone else, I can't see any other hands or any other questions that have been um, added there. So if there are anyone else would like to raise any questions or come back to anything that Shamsul um, spoke about. Not at the moment. Uh, just looking at that, the question that is in the chat, um, Shamsul, oh, and we've got another hand up. I'll come. Oh, oh gosh. OK. <laughs> um, all right, so that's quite quite a long. Question there. Um, so from Anthony, so Anthony, I'll start at the top of it. So your first um, well, sorry, I actually think it was the second question that you typed in, but the the question, what is relative yield lost under infection compared with other varieties? So that was in re reference to Q208, I think. Shamsul, so, are you able to add so anything which, there? So which disease you are talking about? That's uh, return stunting disease, Shamsul. Oh, return to stunting disease. Um, uh, with the, uh, I haven't actually got any data because uh, I think this is the one of the area we don't actually see that much. Yeah. So what you don't see much RSD around? Yeah, we saw lots of RSD. RSD is not a yeah RSD. Of course, we saw RSD. Right. So what is your question actually, Anthony? Well, Jason said that Q28 is commonly infected and it's less susceptible, but it doesn't have effective resistance. And so I guess given it's been growing for so long in under high pressure from other varieties that are infected and we're getting quite a bit of infection in the Q208, does that actually mean that it's susceptible because it's getting more infected or if we grow 208 with infection or without infection, do we have a great yield loss? Do we do we have any information on that? Yeah, I think definitely if we we might have a yield loss, but the but the question actually I am trying to say here that there's we haven't found any resistant variety for for RSD. You should hey. uh, so you you would beg yeah. So I the only thing we actually found there are intermediate variety and some of the like a SRA 22 even actually better than Q208. So we don't actually, we actually recognize that there are some variety which are relatively resistant, but they are not resistant. They are actually relatively resistant to the susceptible clone, which I we, it actually falls into the inter, intermediate. The point actually I was um, uh, mentioning here that this is the one of the disease we don't have like a parent which we can actually produce resistant variety. So I'm not actually saying that RSD is not an issue and we never and and also the other point actually which we I mentioned here that all the screening, all the all the disease we screened for disease resistant, they don't have other alternative option to manage this disease, but RSD have. But yeah, so th this is the two point I actually, yeah. 
Are you agree with me, Anthony? Um, well, no, I, I don't, Shamsul, because when you showed your graph, you actually showed there was a statistically significant difference in the CT values among varieties. And so that's exactly. a starting point for looking for resistance. So I don't buy the argument that, number one, there's no resistance out there for RSD, and number two, that the management strategies that we've been saying have been working for, what, 30, 40 years um, given McGarry's paper, and I think you're an author on that as well, it looks like RSD is extremely widespread and constitutes a very major disease. And I think it's one of those things that the industry probably has to think about a bit more. But that that's all. You, you know I feel about that. Let's get some more no, questions. No, that's all right. And uh, I think there's a good thanks for your question. I think that, uh, we never actually said that RSD is not a major issue. RSD, of course, is an issue. But the number one problem is if you what I could actually disagree with you, uh, Anthony, that we don't have the um, germplasm. We can actually produce RSD to existing variety, and we only have the intermediate developed existence. And the second thing is for RSD, if actually industry, um, um, I think the uh, Rob Megaris paper actually shows that actually the if you actually do a, uh, if you actually have a clean seed and other um, management, uh, you can actually substantially reduce the uh, RSD incidence. Thanks, Anthony. Thanks, Anthony, and thanks, Shamsul. And it's, it, you know, it, it is good to kind of have the opportunity to, to have these kind of conversations and and get um, some interaction you know, and ask those questions, so thank you. Um, Nicole, I can see that you've got your hand up. Yes, I do have my hand up. Um, thanks, Shamsul. Um, it was a really good overview. I have a question for you. Um, so in the last few years, we've made good progress with uh, red rot screening, um, you know, changing the methods. What do you think is the next opportunity to um, change the screening methods or to improve them? What do you think the next opportunity is? I guess the next opportunity for all diseases, I think we have, we like, a, as I said, that like a machine learning and, and hyperspectral images, it actually uses for other diseases. Uh, and also we can actually go for the biosensor. There are lots of things actually coming up. I think we sh we can actually talk about that things, Nicole, and then also we have this um, uh, marker assisted uh, screening. So there's a lot actually that everything is changing so fast. I think uh, I can't actually give you a, like a, a one particular thing. I think there is a like a, all this changing of technology and thing, I think it always we have to look at. I guess we just have to keep abreast of the technology. That's of, course, <laughs> of course, of yeah. course. That's what actually SRA we, go, we are doing. That's mm -hmm. what you're doing. I am doing all are doing actually. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. All right. Are there any other any other questions out there? I can. I, you could either type them into the chat or ask away. We're not overwhelmed this morning. Nothing else. If I mean, I guess you could always, if anyone does think of anything later, you could get in contact with Shamsul or, or someone else at SRA if you'd like to follow up with, with any of the information from today. Um, all right, well, we might kind of wrap it up there. Uh, you can see hopefully that uh, in the chat is the link to that survey that I mentioned earlier. So we really do appreciate, We do I, I do go back and look at what people have um, told us and I pass on that information. So if there's something in particular that you're interested in finding out a little bit more about or a completely different topic, um, let, let us know via that or get in contact with me if you sort of subsequently, if you'd like to pass on any other information, we really do appreciate it. Uh, so at this stage, we don't have any further webinars planned for this year, but we have got some discussions going on, so there might be something that that comes up. Uh, I'll definitely, uh, you know, continue to email of those out. Oh, we do have one other question. Sujesh, Sujesh has a question for you, Shamsul. Hi, Sujesh. Is there any is there any statistical or other ways to separate genetic and environmental effects contribution to the rating? 
No, we, yes, uh, I guess though, we use, uh, we, we use the standard for each trial, which could actually like a, um, compensate for the environmental um, effect, I guess. But we haven't actually had much statistical analysis. You mean about the like a, a coefficient of variance of trial, something like that? Yes, yeah, I'm sure that it's just, um, you know, for smart and things like that. Um, uh, maybe the plant crop or return crop or the humidity and those things can have a major um, effect on rating. So I'm yeah. just wondering if, if those things are being recorded and uh, if those actually really, um, if there's anything to show that they really affect the rating year to year. Yes, I think that we use, that that's actually we use the standard. The standards are actually from one to nine rating. So we know them there and then this actually gives us, so if the disease is higher, it will be higher across the all standards. We can sort of kind of, um, so that's actually gives us a bit of a, um, um, like a, we can uh, kind of minimize the environmental effect in this way, I guess. Yep, thanks. Thanks, Namshu. Thank you. All right. So yeah. So any further webinars that 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 become uh, or that are planned will be advertised on the website and through social media and uh, e newsletter, and we'll send continue to send out emails uh, with an invitation and details to those. Um, all right. There's one more comment there from Jason. If you'd like to read out, environmental conditions can have a large effect on the absolute levels of infection, but the analysis is, is structured to remove trial and year or year effects. Thank you, Jason. Thank All right, you. thank you very much everyone for joining us today. Um, have a lovely day and um, we'll, we'll see you all again next time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye.